Okay, we're going to finish up Unit 2.2, and what we want to look at is where do we need hidden lines, where do we need center marks, and another thing that you haven't been asked to do, but it's been part of our conversation, is how many views are absolutely necessary to fully define this object. So when we think about that, we're thinking we're actually learning dimensioning rules early. So when we get to the point where we're learning to dimension, we'll already have these rules established. And really, when you get out in the field, you want to draw only the views absolutely necessary to fully describe the object. And that doesn't mean that if I only need two views, I don't need to draw a third. If you, if you feel that it's more clear to have a third, then go ahead and put it in there. But we, of course, don't need six views of every object. One thing that tipped us off is two views would be exactly the same. If two views are exactly the same, let's say left and right, uh, you know, on each side of our primary view right, right here, and I'm going to turn my highlighter on. on. On each side of my primary view right here, if I had this view and I flipped it over and I saw that over here on, on this side and it looked exactly the same as this, I don't need that view. So that being said, we have this object right here. And always, if you can put an isometric view of a part on a drawing, that really helps. And this is what we call an axonometric view or an isometric view. So it's saying that our primary or what we kind of erroneously call a front view, but it's front, right, and top is what we're drawing in all of these. And I've asked you to draw all three, no matter if it only needs two. It's just practice. So having this front view, we can get the height of it. We can get the width of this entire part. I can get where this, whatever this edge is, I can get the height of that there. And I can get the location and, and the radius of this half cut right here. So first off, Remembering this, we're going to start off the hierarchy of lines. Visible lines override everything else. Second thing is hidden lines. Hidden lines are the second most important because they project geometry. So we could see more geometry than what we could touch in each orientation. And the, the lowest man on the totem pole is the center line. So if a hidden line and center line are right in line, then we go with the hidden line because geometry is most important. Do you think we need this right side view? And this is a conversation, you guys. Um, well, I would think that we need this because we have a step right here. And I can't touch that here. I can never dimension the hidden lines. So if I look at this, I've got holes. And that tells me automatically that I have to have this view. Either the right view or the left view, doesn't matter, but I need a view where I can touch those holes because that is our true profile. So I get this, and we said we could get the height of this step, but we also need the depth of that. And I could get the depth of that here, and if I went up and projected along the miter line, I could also get it here. So it doesn't matter which one, but if I need this view anyway for the holes and this step in the back, because I can't touch that in the front view. I can't touch that in the top view. I have to have this right side view. Okay, I need the front view. Definitely have to have the front view because of that object. You know, it's a curved object. And we can't call out a radius or circle where we cannot see its full profile. It's true profile. So I can't see that up here. It looks like it might be a square just a square cut or a step. It could be a protrusion or a cut. Um, I need this view, though, because of this angle, you guys. I can't really tell that from here. So in this particular one, I would go with all three views. You guys have, you agree with that? You think that's okay? I can project this around here to get my side. I can project this around here to get where that angle starts on this view. I have my edges of the circular half or full round cut. We call this a full round if it's 180 degrees. 
All right, so let's talk about the hidden lines. I have hidden lines from this hole here and the center line. We were talking about this. If I have a circle, I'm going to have a mark for the center, but I also need the legs to extend be beyond the largest of the concentric or circular objects. So there's only one. I'm just going to extend these legs out here. Now on the, sorry, on the, um, semicircle here. I have a mark here, but I only have one leg. And you can see kind of there's some gray right here. You don't, if you don't have room for a gap between your mark in the center and the legs, just leave the legs off. Just get the mark. You don't want to have any center marks touching geometry, you know, and making it look like it's continuous geometry. Because if you printed this black and white and you know, the line weights were hard to discern, then we just want to see the center mark. We just want to see geometry. So what is this right here? This is this back edge right here for this angle. We also have the hole from the other side. You see the center marks are extending beyond the geometry on both sides. Over here in this right side view, we have the bottom of this full round cut and it stops right at this plane. So, you know, that may look solid. You may not have enough space to get a gap right here for a hidden line. So putting that in no matter what just shows that that stops there. And this, you know, there are some things that will be uh, conflicting because of the length of the line it, or the closeness to geometry. Sometimes we just kind of have to say, well, this would be better than that. We have to use judgment call sometimes. You have this hole. We use our miter line. We project up and over. We've got our hidden lines for that. It looks the same as the hidden lines for this. And then in the top, why don't we have, I mean, I know that I have this hole here, but why don't I have a center mark here? It's because this edge right here is overriding it. So we have a hidden edge instead of a center mark right here. We have a hidden line right there for that, that edge right here, this corner right here. Any questions about this one? And this is a conversation, you guys. So I really want to hear questions. To reiterate, the line display hierarchy is... Uh, let me see what you said in that chat real quick because it went away fast on me. Is visible lines, not tangent lines, but visible lines. And most of the time we're not going to draw tangent lines. That's where a curve goes to a straight um, and it blends out. So we really wouldn't see that if we sanded something smooth into a smooth radius like wood. You really wouldn't see an edge. So visible lines, hidden lines, center lines. You're absolutely right. Okay, so if one overrides the other, like this, this hidden line right here, in line with that center line right here, we'll have a hidden line over a center line. Because geometry first, geometry first. That's If you can remember, geometry is the most important. Just showing the center that this is circular up here in this top view, showing that that's circular, I can see that in another view or see it in this view here or here. So... You know, it's better to show the geometry in that view. Uh, let's see. Right here, we have the edge of a hole and the edge of that step are right in alignment. And we just have one hidden line. Do not put another hidden line just like half a, you know, just barely above that one. That just really gets confusing for people. You guys ready to go to the next one? Any other questions? All right. This one's kind of a booger. <laughs> and I say that, let's look at all of our, um, I'm going to get a highlighter over here too. Let's look at all of our front edges. So we have this bottom edge and then we have this angled edge. So we have two edges right here. And then we have the outside perimeter. It's straight. And then it goes to an angle. So anytime we go from a straight to an angle, we're going to have that edge right there. We went to this angle, we come up and we're, we only have a half step here on the top. 
and we have what we call a full round. Now, this is where I was saying, if you cannot get a leg in here without a gap, you need a gap right here to your geometry. I would not have put a line over there to geometry. I, and I don't care if we have a gap to the center mark. Usually you're going to have a gap to geometry no matter where you are, except when it is geometry. You know, hidden lines are geometry. So when they touch an edge, they should touch an edge because the cut or the protrusion goes all the way to the edge of, of the solid material. Okay, so we have a full round. And if you can get a little tick mark on each side right here, that's fine. But if you cannot, just put a plus and then where you can get a leg, just put one, right? And that's absolutely okay just to have one leg going down there because that's all we have room for, but it's a little bit more descriptive. Okay, now we have this little inset box here and it goes up and over and we can get its size, its height and its width in this view. This one's a kind of tricky. Um, let's see. Then in the right side view, we have this angle, and I'm, I'm looking over here in this right picture. I have this angle right here, and I have this angle right here. So we're showing this angle, this angle. We have this edge right here that is showing us that we're going from a flat to another angle, or it's a step. It could be a step, right? But there's some change, some shift right here. And then we have a half or one unit, half of the parts width where this comes down and stops. But it may have been hard to see that these angles were a half unit. But when you see it going to the half of the, you know, the grid, that's kind of what tips me off. You see the half of the grid right there. All right. In the top view, just talking about visible lines. Lots of busy work here going on. So I've got just projecting up and over. I've got the outside of the part at the back. I've got the angle at the back. I've got the, the edge of this. And then I have the front of my part. Now, going from the primary view up to the top view, I have the outside of the part on both sides. Then I have this top of this angle right here. I have the start of this full round. And then I have the same thing on the other side right here. Now let's look at our hidden lines. So I've got this cut right here. And it shows that it's one unit deep right here. Maybe I can just do this. It's one unit deep right here. Well, I'm going to go in with, I can't touch it, but it's one unit deep. It's the same height as this, which is projected over. And I still can't get the depth here. Can I touch the depth from the top? No. So this is kind of a trick. When, we talk, when we're talking about how many views are necessary, we would have to have, we would have to cut this part in two to have a section view to make this solid. That means that all the hidden lines go away, all the edges would go away, as if I just cut a paper thin slice of this part and had a section view to measure that depth because I cannot dimension to hidden lines and I can't touch it in any of the three views. So another way that we do this is this. We could make a localized breakout. And so a localized breakout essentially just has like the bite marks, the teeth marks, where you've cut it away, and then this becomes solid. And wherever you cut it away would be hatched where it is solid, but this, we could actually dimension that here. So that's a little bit different. We would have to use an additional view of some kind of cutaway so that we could get the depth of that feature right here. All right, when we look at this feature, it's right in line with that back edge. So we have hidden lines right here. We have the tangible edge and then the hidden lines right there. 
And tangible, when I say that, it means touchable. You can touch it. You can feel that edge. Now, at the back, we have an, an edge right here that will give us this back edge right here for that plane. We have our center mark. We have our hidden line right here for the bottom edge of that. But this visible line right here overrides the center mark. So we don't put anything. And you're going to find that people want to do this. They want to put a little smidge in here and a little smidge in here. I'm not doing that because I don't know what the heck that is. I can't see that that's a center line. So just leave it visible edge only. All right, at the top here, I have a bottom edge. And this is where you really want to use this project geometry. But um, miter line right here. This really helps when you're going from top to right or right to top or left, just depending on where your primary view is. And your primary view could be up here. And you could have um, a view down here and over here and project around this corner. It doesn't matter. You're projecting around uh, 90 degrees to another view. And that's exactly what we've done here with this miter line. All right, so we have that bottom edge, and that's what that hidden line is. And then we have our center mark, and it's going only beyond the circular object, and that only goes one unit. So you see this center line, the, it extends beyond this and this. And if you can get a gap right here, do that, because you don't, you want to try and not have it look like geometry. And that would look like geometry if that was a black line, right? It would look like there's a point or an edge or an angle or something going on right here. So try and get that little gap to the end if you can. Any questions on this one? Okay. This is a fun one. So I know that I need this entire profile. I need it for angles. Definitely when you have angles, you're going to need the profile of that angle. There is a solid step right here. So we have a solid plane all the way back around here, and we have to be careful of that. So we step over here one unit, and then we have this angle, and we step back down. Now from the side view, I see that I have this solid edge because this is a solid edge around here. And Let me just undo this real quick. I have this solid edge here. It comes up. I have this edge for this angle. Come back down. Just think about this being flattened. So that's what it would look like. And then we have this peak coming up. Okay, in the top view, we also have the depth here. So in this one, I can get the height. I can get the width. I need this view because of angles. And I can get the depth from this view. But the depth from this view, it's the same part. If you project that up and over, we get the same depth in the top view. All right, so I've got where this starts in the top view. In the top view, we see where this angle starts. It's projected up. This point and this one. And we've got something that's really important up here. So we got these two holes. So anytime we have holes in a view that are true profile of the hole, we got to have that view. So we need the front view. We need the top view. Is there anything that we cannot get in the front and top view that we can get in the right side view? We've got the height of this. We've got the depth of that. I've got where it starts. So that feature is pretty much taken care of. Um, as far as this feature, I've got where this plane is. I've got where this, how deep that plane goes here. So I've kind of got that taken care of and how deep the part is. And I've got these holes. So to me, you don't need all three views. I could, I have to have the front view. I have to have the top view, top view for the holes, front view for the angles, right side view. I can put it in for clarity's sake or I can leave it out. Um, let's look at the projections. 
So we got to have this hidden line. And this is one that's kind of hard to remember, but it shows me that this triangle, this point here is not solid all the way back to this plane. It shows me that there's a hidden edge back here and there, there's a cut in there by having that hidden line. I have the projection of the holes here coming down and the extension, the center lines extending beyond the circular object, not looking like geometry. In the top view, I have a hidden edge. Now I have a solid edge for this angle. And this hidden line should come all the way to that geometry. But that is for this edge right here. This one right here is for this hidden line right there. And then the edges of that triangular cut right there and there. Now, there's something that I want to show you guys. And this is called a continuation line. And when two holes are horizontally or vertically in alignment, you can take that that center mark or use an axial center line. If the holes like are way far apart, you can, and it has this center mark and I'm not drawing the mark right now, but I could put a center line here to say that those are in alignment. Therefore, I only use one dimension to locate it side to side because they're the same distance from the edge side to side, they're in alignment. So that's what we call a continuation line. That dimension or that center mark is continued to the next object. And we do that sometimes for planes too, but it's just a solid thin line. Not like geometry and it will never touch the edges. Uh, over here on this side, we have the height of this triangular cut. We have the holes coming down and we have our center mark extending beyond our circular object. Any questions about this geometry? Okay, now we're going to start on to exercise 2-3, and this was your homework. And I'm going to start with this, looks like a top hat, like A. Lincoln's hat, right? Um, we call this a flange and a flange gives a flat face to a circular object for attachment sometimes. So you might use this, um, might slip inside something else and that flange would stop that round, uh, hollow piece from slipping all the way inside another piece of pipe. It can also act as a stopping point. So let's talk about this and notice that it's hollow. And now we're going to learn another rule, and we're going to learn rules for cylindrical objects in this exercise. 